guys welcome back to my channel today I'm doing basically like a wrap-up of 2020 where I'm gonna talk about my best books of 2020 <laughs> so today I'm gonna to be discussing my top 10 books we're gonna talk from number 10 which is my 10th best book up until number one which is my ultimate book of this year and also my favorite book of all time now <laughs> so I'm going to talk you through them, talk you through the plot, talk you about what I liked about them. Some of them I read at the beginning of the year, so I remember a little bit less about what they're about, but I'm certainly going to try and I hope you take some recommendations from this video because these books are very good in my opinion. Number 10 on the top 10 list of books this year is Room 119 or Room 119 by T.F. Lintz. I was actually sent this book by the author um, earlier this year and <laughs> as you can see I tabbed it. And as I got halfway through the book, I kind of stopped tabbing because I was so invested that I just couldn't bring myself to get a tab. And um, I, I loved this book. I thought it was incredible. It's hard to describe this book because the synopsis does not tell you what this book is about because it takes you by surprise and you end up going on a journey that you did not expect to go on. And I do not want to spoil that journey in any way because the best thing to do in this book is go in blind. This is basically about Dean Harrison and he's a stocks trader from Whitby and he has the best life he has like a wife and kid and high flying car as it calls it um and he has everything you could ever want until one day he loses his job and everything starts to go downhill and he ends up in the mystery that is the room 119 and he has to reevaluate his life and goes on a journey to discover the mysteries and secrets. Now this is a very peculiar and different book and that synopsis does nothing for this book. It is so good but you cannot know what makes it so good. Um, I, I adored it. It is a self-published book as well so even better to go pick this up. It is something that keeps your mind going. It is not a book that you can just read and not really think about you really do get engrossed in the story and trying to discover the mystery and um very very interesting but as i said i don't want to talk too much about it because it will spoil it but i really highly recommend you go read this book i did do a dedicated review for this book it's my first ever dedicated review and i was a bit nervous but i think i did okay so if you want to go check that video and find out more about it it is spoiler free and you can go and check that out there number nine on this list is before the coffee gets cold now this is a collection of short stories but they're not short stories they all revolve around this cafe following four i think different people in this cafe and their journey in a time traveling cafe that you can go back in time or forward in time but this one book focuses on going back in time to meet anybody who'd already been into the cafe so we follow four different stories but they all are combined into one big story it's not like a short story collection where you have a different story it's <laughs> how do I explain this it's just four people but they all tie together and that's what I really liked about this book is everything you're reading ends up tying together at the end into like a nice parcel and it's very satisfying but this was so heart-wrenching once again it's the kind of book that there's nothing to say other than it's a time traveling cafe uh, this is translated works and the writing is beautiful it is definitely more of a um character driven story than a plot driven story which is not usually my cup of tea but it is so so good i really really enjoyed it i've read the sequel since and i love the sequel just as much i think that one's before the coffee gets hold taken the tales from the cafe that one focuses as well on the future if you have not read this it is a really really quick short read i would highly recommend you do so because it's the perfect story to just kind of lose yourself in and have a couple of hours away from the real world which is perfect right now and if you're interested in reading something that's really unique and not something that you see in a lot of books this is definitely the read for you as i said nothing much can be said about this so like i know it's a really short explanation but i just really enjoyed the time reading it i enjoyed being out of the world for a little while because i read it during lockdown the first one and it was just it was just magical. Number eight on my list <laughs> is quite a funny one. Not Obviously these books weren't published in 2020, so you're all gonna think to yourself, okay, The Selection by Kira Cass. And by this, I kind of mean like the first three books in the series. I like the last two too, but mainly the first three. I read this for the first time this year, expecting not to like it because I thought everybody who likes it is having the nostalgia of them as a team. I loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. The story premise of this is 
when it, for the prince wants to get married there is a selection where girls are chosen and i believe 12 um compete to win the prince's heart so they all move to the cat the castle i suppose so they all move to the palace and they get to have individual dates it's kind of like the bachelor um but with royalty and we follow america singer i hate that name so much as she dates maxon and her storyline developing with him in maybe an attempt to win the competition i don't want to spoil too much but this was a good book <laughs> now i was embarrassed at first that i was giving this a five star because i was like oh oh that that's not something i would usually rate five star but i have no qualms it was perfection i had the best time i felt good after reading it i the second one made me cry the elite it made me sob my eyes out um there's not much to be said other than this is a cult favorite and that's for a reason and if you think to yourself oh well i didn't read this as a teenager so i'm not gonna like it now give it a chance give it a chance i would never have picked this up if it wasn't like six pound in the works but i'm so glad that i did because i have no regrets zero regrets i cannot wait to reread this series action i have not read all the spin-off books um or any of a kira cass's other works like betrothed or anything but they do not have good reviews so i'm a little bit nervous to go ahead and read all those but i'm gonna have to because i need more content from kira cast like the writing style is just there for me number seven on this list is the he seven husbands of evelyn hugo seven seven that's good isn't it? didn't plan that <laughs> but this is about evelyn hugo who is a very famous hollywood actress and she's getting older and so she decides to contact a reporter known as monique monique's a little bit confused because she's not a very big reporter like she's only small she works for a company um but seven evelyn hugo contacts her and says i will only share my story if you are the one to tell it we go through the story of following evelyn telling monique about her life and why she had seven husbands which is a big question that everybody would like to know is what happened in her life why did she have seven husbands what went wrong in these marriages what was right in these marriages it's a sapphic book it has a twist in it that was really enjoyable and i think that a lot of people don't give this a chance because they've seen the hype it gets on booktube and i completely understand that booktube hype books are often overhyped um to be honest i wouldn't have picked it up if it wasn't so hyped but i am really glad i did i just didn't expect what i got from this story i read it in one sitting i i just sat there and i couldn't get myself out of it even though i only wanted to read like a chapter or two it is based from los angeles in 1950s to in the 1980s um so obviously it's like not a world she's built but she does a really good job of describing this world that it's not really a world she did a really good job of describing this time period and i felt like i was there and being part of the glitz and glam of evelyn hugo's life i was obsessed with evelyn hugo like i'm a fan of a fictional character now like i really love her and it just seems taylor jacobs really has a talent like i read daisy jones and the six i gave it a four star i didn't adore it but i really did like it both books the writing style is just very unique and different so if you think to yourself i'm not really willing to give this a go because of the hype i think it is deserving of the hype and i think it's a lot more than the basic story that you think it's going to be and if you gave it a chance you'd probably love it um i'm sure there's people who would disagree but it was definitely there for me number six on this list is the cruel prince by holly black obviously again another booktube favorite from a long time ago which i never read because i just joined booktube this year <laughs> but another story that was really impressive to me this follows Jude and Carden. Jude is human and her mother was murdered by her sister's father and so had to move with her sister's father to the Fey world. In this Fey world, humans are kind of treated like scum, so she has to fight really hard to be respected. And in her school class is Prince Carden, um, obviously the son of a king. And he is horrible to her. He's like the worst kind of person. He makes me so angry, even though I love him. He makes me so, so mad. She basically has to fight to gain respect and not be bullied and targeted by him. Um, and also by her father, who's not her father, her stepfather, I suppose. Um, adopted father. It's actually a really short 
series. It's three books and they're all quite short considering that it's in a brand new world. And I really like fantasy worlds that are based within the real world. So for example, the human world is there and you just go over the sea and it's like in a fae world. Um, I really like fantasies like that. If you have any recommendations of fantasies like that, please let me know because I really do like them. And it makes me comprehend the idea of it a little bit easier. And so this was really, really easy to read, especially for a fantasy. It just kind of felt like it was on human earth, but with a little bit of touch of magic. I really like the world building. There is a map. The map is very nice. It's elfing. I really, really like looking at all the uh, buildings <laughs> and all the castles. <laughs> anyway, and each book in the series is based, like The Wicked King is based underwater. And that's really, really cool for a lot of it anyway. And that's really, really cool to me. I just thought that the world building and the depth and the characters are a lot of characters, including side characters, and they evoke so much emotion. Like most, one, some of my most hated characters are in this book of any book series ever. And you still want to read about them? <laughs> it's incredible, actually, this book series. I didn't like the last one, The Queen of Nothing. I gave it three stars, being generous. Um, but it didn't spoil my love. I still would happily reread this anytime. And I do plan on doing that next year. And the cover's beautiful. <laughs> but a really glad, good one that I picked up, and I'm sure most of you have read. But if you're into fantasy and you have not given this a try yet, I would recommend. Number five on this list, so we're halfway, is Cersei by Madeline Miller. The synopsis actually tells you a lot about this book, but I don't want to speak too much about it. It is based on the, ow, <laughs> Greek god, goddess Cersei, and she has been banished by Zeus to Aiaia, I think, which is a little island where she is to live all on her own um, and never see anyone again. It doesn't quite work out like that ever, and it's a, it kind of annoys me in the story, but forget that, forget that. Um, we follow her on this beautiful island and it's basically like magic like it's, it's got the sheep there and, and it's got all the animals she needs it's got the food and it restocks itself every day um but we follow her on this island deciding to hone in on witchcraft i, I think it's described as witchcraft or is it or something else Do they call it something else to harness her occult craft um and you you basically see a lot of people come through and meet her on this island and you see her story progress through hundreds of years I think it's based on because she's destined to live forever on this island on her own and there is there's so much to this story considering it's really short it's like 300 and something pages yeah it's just like 320 pages so much happens you see her f um meet potential lovers you see her go on adventures you see potential enemies you see so much in this book I don't know how to take it all in. It took me a long time to read it. It is not an easy read. A lot of it can... There's some graphic parts in it as well. Not too much, but a couple. Um, but I, as someone who doesn't read a lot of Greek mythology books or any mythological book, because I'm just not like clever enough to understand it, <laughs> I really enjoyed this. And I feel like it was accessible to any reader, no matter what your knowledge on the subjects. Mine is zero. Um, I think Madeline Miller did a really good job of making sure it was understandable and I don't want to say simple because this book was definitely not simple but it was simple for me to understand if I took my time so I would definitely recommend this this is her island and it's just you can see why you'd fall in love with it it's a beautiful sounding island she did a really good job of explaining the world and I just adored every minute of it um at the beginning where we're based where all the gods and goddesses are it's beautifully described. I loved it. Some of the things that happened in this book were shocking. I haven't reread this and I need to because I remember so much about this book that I just really want to experience again. Um, I did just recently feature this in my Among Us book tag and I said that it was one that I really wanted all of my friends to read and I do. So please, if you have not read this yet and you're thinking, well, it's because mythology is not my thing. I'm not, I'm not understanding enough of it. Neither am I. It's still so good. Please check this out. It is worth your time. Next on this list, we have Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna Maguire. This is kind of just more the whole series than the first one. My favourite book in this series is In an Absent Dream, and I love that book. But this series follows orphan, not or they're not orphans, are they? Children in like a boarding school home, some are orphaned, where magical, ch no, children who have been to magical worlds go. So in this world, the, a doorway will appear to a child and a child can go through this doorway into another world. 
problem is if they then come back through the doorway at a future point sometimes they cannot get back in sometimes the door never reappears for them and these children feel stuck in this world that they shouldn't be in the human world because they feel like they're destined to go back to their magical world that they cannot get to through their doorways because the doorways are gone that was a really bad explanation um and at first you follow all the children in what is this place called Eleanor West home for wayward children and you follow some of them and the way they all bond together and how they're from different worlds some of them are from logic worlds some of them are from nonsense worlds the best thing about this series is the world building like every world is so different and so cool and I'm really excited to see the different concepts that this series develops because I think it has like a never-ending possibility that I could never get bored because every world is so different this book's kind of like I give it a five star and I adored it but this book is not a good enough representation of the series because this book is mostly is it does take part in our world like the, the normal current world but every other book is just so magical based in loads of different worlds and that's the best part of this series but if you don't love this try and get the next try and get through the next one or the next two or three and they're only short i mean it doesn't take you that long that's another thing the audiobook's are like five hours it takes no time at all trust me it's a really good read and I, they, they're not i thought they were like children friendly i don't know why i thought that they're not i mean they're not explicit but they're not children friendly like i initially thought so try and check this series out i mean they're short and they're fun and they're sweet what more can you want it's an easy read it's perfect for readathons so now we're into the top three number three is heartstopper by alice oseman this is a graphic novel and there's currently three in the series <sighs> obsessed it is about nick and charlie and charlie is bisexual and He's just living his life in school when he meets Charlie, who is in his head straight, but maybe not straight. And they go on the journey of maybe falling in love. How do I not spoil? And they go on this journey, especially for Nick, who is discovering his sexuality, maybe thinking, maybe I'm not as straight as I first thought. And we see Charlie dealing with some issues such as bullying. And the books go on to just handle a lot of different issues. Um, but the there's not much story to these books especially not the first one other than two boys and following their journey it's more the art style <laughs> let me just let me show you a page like look at that art style it's so cute there's not even any text on this page because i don't want to spoil anything but come on the third book had me crying like f every five pages i couldn't contain myself it's a really quick and easy read and if you're looking for a graphic novel this is the best one out there that I have tried. I would argue to say the best graphic novel ever. And so if you're feeling a cute, happy romance, or you're just feeling like a light um, contemporary graphic novel, here is the ultimate. And there's three currently out. The fourth one I have pre-ordered. I'm ready, I'm waiting, I need it. Now we're onto the top two. And these top two are elite tier. So at second place, didn't quite make it to first, is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco just released like it's a very new release and um I have two copies which is the first ever book that I've kept two copies of but that is because one is the beautiful fairy loop copy and this one is the one that I read and tapped um it's a little much it, it is a little much I read this last month when it released and I plan on reading it again this month <laughs> maybe next month we'll see um, but this book follows two witches in a witch well no it follows a witch who is from a family of witches and they have to keep themselves quiet obviously because people don't respect respond to witchcraft very well and then what's the name of our protagonist Ooh. Amelia Amelia's twin sister twin yeah Amelia's twin sister Victoria doesn't come home one day and so she goes plodding along looking for her and finds her murdered and hanging over her body is one of the princes of hell wrath now wrath is my new book boyfriend so I'm, I'm claiming him just to put it out there if you read this book you can't have him he's mine and they decide that they both need to find the person who killed Victoria obviously for her for revenge him for other reasons um and you follow them going from like enemies um, while discovering the 
murder, murder. Yeah, discovering the murder of her twin sister. But do they have aligning interests? You never know. Honestly, the only thing that I'm upset about this book is they show you this world, okay, the seven circles. Oh, look at that. And it's got like all the seven sins, so like house of sloth, house pride, house envy. Is it the seven sins? House greed, house wrath, gates of hell. I don't, I don't quite know. They showed you this, right? So I was ready. Just be warned, you do never, you do not enter this world in this book hurtful that's not a spoiler i'm just pre-warning you for not have the disappointment that i had um this book is all based in the world that amelia is in i suppose it's like a new earth um but this book was something else um i was told to read this because i was told if you like crescent city then you will like this i love crescent city and so i'm glad i tried this it was it was amazing I, I don't even know what to say the writing style was incredible i've never read from carrie maniscalco before but i now really want to read the stalking jack the ripper series even though i'm not into historical fiction simply to experience more from this author i'm i'm baffled by how good this writing was and how much i was hooked a negative of mine obviously other than not going to this world is that i wish this was longer like this is a short boy this is like 300 yeah 370 pages that is not long enough it's not i need at least 100 maybe even 200 more i just wanted more i cannot wait a year or whatever for the next one i can't do it i need it now it pains me to not have the rest of this story and i'm so excited for the next one when this does release and i I will be reading it on release <laughs> i'm very excited about it but yes if you have not read this i cannot hype it up enough to you i cannot it's not possible and if you don't like it please don't tell me don't ruin my fantasy no don't tell me okay everybody loves this book okay now for the most exciting moment and that is number one which i'm sure a lot of you know what my number one is if you watch my videos at all but it is Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. Now before you call me basic, because everybody loves Sarah J Mass, I've never read from Sarah J Mass before, okay? I was not expecting this to be my favorite book of all time. I've never read another book of hers. This one was my first, and it is my new favorite book of all time. I know it's not called Crescent City, it's called House of Earth and Blood, but I'm not saying that every time. This book, it's huge. Look at my one little tiny tab. <laughs> I'm rereading this book next month and I'm going to be tabbing it, but I just had one little quote that I really loved. It's now my Twitter header. That, that was so irrelevant. But this is my favourite book of all time. We are following in this book. God, we're following a lot. This book is about Bryce Quinlan and her best friend Danica is murdered. And so she needs to go on this quest that was presented to her by some man to discover who killed Danica and of course she wants to know because she's being eaten up by this it's been like two years and she still can't get over it um and so she's partnered up with Hunt Athalar who is there as well for her to discover the murder mystery and oh, there's so much more to this story than just that there is so much more but you have to read it to find out what goes on and every time I thought I knew what was going to happen I did not I would I would never have guessed this ending um a lot of the scenes in this book made me cry made me laugh it was probably the most heart-wrenching and heartwarming books and so I was very confused during the whole experience but I adored it I don't want to talk too much about it because I did do a full dedicated review that you can go and watch um of me <laughs> just talking about this book in so much detail the advantages and the disadvantages I was not biased I talked about what I liked and what I didn't the main thing that I didn't like is, and a lot of people do complain about it, the first 200 pages of this book, I was so bored and I thought I was gonna have to DNF. And it's because there is so much, excuse me, excuse me, that's very rude. These are the fairy loot tarot cards. I'm back in there. Um, it, it was info dumping, it was. And um, I can understand why people put it down and don't pick it back up because I almost did myself but I'm so glad I carried through you you think to yourself well it doesn't need that much info dumping 
it does and i didn't really feel it was info dumping until i got to the remainder of the book the last 600 pages because it's an 800 page book um so once i got to that after the 200 pages i was like oh my god this is so fast paced this is incredible you just need to get through the first 200 pages which aren't terrible but they're just not great to be able to get to the good stuff but it is worth it. It is worth that stuff. And you need those 200 pages to learn the backstory and get a sense of the world because the world in this book is so good. I don't know if it's meant to be this or if someone else has said it to put it in my brain before I read it. But it feels like New York. I picture New York, but with fantastical elements. I don't know if I'm supposed to, so maybe someone can let me know on that one. Just I, I'm rereading this next month with Catherine and I'm so excited to do so because I'm going to tab it and highlight it. I'm really hold my thoughts because i've only read it once and i'm very upset about that situation but i would definitely recommend the audiobook as well i read along while i use the audiobook because with big books i find it quite hard especially with big fantasy so um not that this is hard to understand fantasy but it's just a lot to read i really really enjoyed it it's a lot more than you think it would be i've never read from sarah j mass before so i cannot compare it to her other books to tell you if it's good for her or not i don't know but I love this and I'm so excited for the rest of the series. I think the next book comes out in November of 2021. God, that hurts, to be honest. Um, and I don't know what that's going to revolve around, but I am unbelievably excited. I'm so glad I decided to read this. I'm so glad I listened to the hype because it is definitely my favourite book. So that was all of my favourite books from this year. Of course, Before the Coffee Gets Cold is not on here. I need to get myself a final copy. But these were all the best books of this year. Now I want to know if any of you thought this was surprising for me, if you read any of these, if because of this video you were enticed by any of these, I would really really like to know. I am really really glad that I got to read all these books and I really hope that you guys equally love these books if you've read them. If not, don't tell me, no I'm joking. But now that this video is super super long, I'm gonna go put all these books back. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and if you stay to the end, congrats. You deserve an award thank you so so much i hope you have a fab wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye